Well, this is it, Molly. Oakmore. This... this place? You have to be kidding. No. Well, what happened to the broad green lawns and the servants in crisp white uniforms? Oakmore was the most beautiful estate in the county. I can't understand why my uncle has let it run down like this. It doesn't look to me like your uncle or anybody else lives here. I told you we should have waited for an answer to our letter. You told me every mile of the way. But you didn't suggest what we should do for money or a place to stay while we were waiting. I only hope he still remembers you were his favorite nephew. When was the last time he dandled you on his knee? Twenty years ago? Cut the chatter. Let's go inside. Go back to the village. I've got a... I've got exactly $12 in my pocket. How long do you think that'll keep us? Well, it's obvious he doesn't live here anymore. Let's go. Don't be in such a rush. Hello, anybody here? You take a look in there, honey. There's nobody in there. Oh, maybe the old boy took a trip or something. Or maybe he's just not using this part of the house. Anyway, I'm going to make sure. Conrad? Oh, 
Well, I guess you don't recognize me, sir. It's Fred. Fred Bancroft? Your nephew. And this is uh, my wife, Molly. Molly, this is my uncle. Hello. I hope you don't think we're snooping. We did knock, and Fred was certain you were here. I was in the library. In the library? Yes. Well, that certainly is good to see you again, sir. How have you been? Come this way. Ped, I looked in the library. He wasn't in there. It was empty. Don't be silly. Come on. Come on. You know, there's... There's something vaguely familiar about that Dr. Marcus. Creepy, sinister sort of chap, don't you agree? I have it. He's the kind of netherworld character who is forever popping up in nightmares. My nightmares, at any rate. But as for the doctor's young and apparently uninvited house guests, well, something tells me they'll soon regret disturbing the tomb-like serenity of this decaying old house. I dare you to guess what's in store for Fred Bancroft, as played by Dick York. And Molly, his charming but frightened young wife, as played by Carolyn Carney. And how will Professor Angus Holden, as played by Henry Hunter, figure in the terror which awaits our unfortunate young couple? If you think the answers are entirely dependent upon the whims of the inhospitable Dr. Conrad Markison, you're right, my friend. So please, just sit quietly. Don't make a sound. I shudder to think of what would happen if he knew that you were watching. We're not intruding. I thought I'd never get warm again. You know, we drove all the way from New York in that open car of ours, and we didn't want to see the sunshine. I, uh... I suppose you got our letter explaining it. No. I have been away, and I am leaving again soon. Oh, well, I guess some explanations are in order. <laughs> yeah, you must think we're a couple of nuts barging in like this. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, to make a long story short, Molly and I had planned to do our post-grad work at Penrose. We thought that maybe you would... But tell the truth, sir, we're flat broke. We need a place to stay until we find jobs. It, it would only be for a short time, Uncle. I figured maybe you could use your influence at the university to maybe get us a part-time job as, well, at the cafeteria. I severed my connection with the university years ago. Well, I, I'm sure it would only take us a few days to find something. So if, um, if you could only put us up, I'd be glad to pitch in and, uh, well, the place certainly does need repairs and uh, the grounds need work and... Stop begging him, Fred. Let's get out of here. And stay where? I don't care. Anywhere. Come in here, please.
There is body here. You may take what you need. That's awfully nice of you, Uncle Conrad. But we're not beggars. What Molly means is that we couldn't take your money. We just need a place to stay for a few days. What you ask is impossible. The house is uncared for. All the utilities have been disconnected. All right. Perhaps the people at Penrose will be a little more hospitable than my uncle. You? You mean you're really going to enroll at Penrose? Yes, sir, that's what I've been talking about. That's why we came here. Well, <laughs> it would hardly do for you to be discussing me in a bad light with my former colleagues, would it now? Perhaps we had better make some arrangement. Look, we're not trying to force you into having us if it's going to be inconvenient. We don't go talking about people behind their backs. I am glad to hear you say that. I will hold you to your word. No one must know that I have returned. The work on which I'm engaged is highly secret. You understand? Yes, sir. It is essential that news of any progress I may have made remain confidential until I am ready. I ask you to respect my confidence. Of course, Uncle Conrad. Very well, then, you may stay. In the master suite off the hall on the second floor. Do whatever cleaning you deem necessary in those rooms in the kitchen, that is all. Touch nothing else. Above all, do not seek me out or disturb me for any reason whatsoever. Whatever you say, sir. One more condition, and this is vital. I do not care to have you venture forth at night. You must either stay in those rooms from dusk until dawn, or leave the house entirely for the night. You understand? Set out some traps tomorrow. <sighs> you all right? <laughs> I'm not hungry tonight anyway. Well, that's good. Gus hasn't had a crumb fit to eat. Everything's years old. Go and look for yourself. Look. he exist? What does he eat? Look, this kitchen, it hasn't been used for years. Well, he, uh, he did say he'd been away. Let's take a look at our rooms.
there's a bathtub in here big enough to go water skiing. We'll have to turn the water on, though. Not too bad, huh? It's, it's dusty and it's damp. Good fire will fix that. There's somebody out there. Lock with sprung killers. Fred, your uncle has locked us in. Don't get panicky. We can always bail out that window. It's not a very complimentary good morning for a considerate husband. Oh, it scared me. Oh, coffee. Oh, you wonderful, beautiful man. Where'd you find it? In the kitchen. It was an old can that hadn't been opened. Well, that's the first time I ever cooked on a wood stove. But our door was jammed. No, it was open. He must have slipped the bolt before I woke up. What Then he did lock us in. Just take it easy. The old man said he didn't want us prowling around after dark, and we agreed. Guess he just wasn't taking any chances. But why? What's he hiding? What doesn't he want us to How see? How the devil do I know? Here, drink your coffee. And get dressed. I'm going to shave. I looked in the hallway. None of the doors have bolts, just the master suite, and it's not a new fixture. Oh? Fred, there's something you're not telling me. All right, if you must know, my Aunt Lorinda was, uh, shall we say, mentally disturbed for years before she died. My uncle refused to have her committed. He lived out her life in these rooms. At least that's how the family gossip goes. Why didn't you tell me last night? Because you would have panicked and spoiled everything. Well, you're darn right I would have. Whatever was wrong with your Aunt Lorinda doesn't excuse our being locked up in here like a pair of sheep. Honey, if it makes the old man happy to know that we're not roaming around the house poking into his keepsakes, it doesn't hurt to humor him, does it? Well, suppose there's a fire some night. <laughs> if you weren't the world's worst worry ward. Well, anything could happen in this place. All right. All right, I will take care of it. Now, why don't you go into the village and get us some food? In the meantime, I'll get started on the yard work. That's the family bankroll. Twelve bucks. See how far you can make it stretch. Suppose we can't find jobs before this runs out, Fred. Go on. Bobby, how's the KP? The KP is starved. Uh, what took you so long? Um, well, did you uh, speak to your uncle about locking us in last night? <sighs> no. Oh, I didn't think you would. Well, I didn't because I couldn't. He left me a note, said he'd gone. For how long? The note didn't say. 
Well, I hope we'll be gone before he comes back. I stopped at the student's employment office and filled out some job applications for us. Good. What's the prognosis? Hopeful. Only hopeful? Only hopeful. Well, at least we've got a roof over our heads, such as it is. <laughs> And something to sustain the corporeal man. Right. Now hurry up, I'm starved. <sighs> Didn't realize I was getting so flabby. There's not a muscle in my carcass that's not hauling bloody murder. Honey, where are my clean t shirts? Molly! something to get my mind off this place. Is this the best you can do, old newspapers? Well, if you'd rather curl up to a musty old science book, go help yourself. The library's full of... Come on, it's already dark. We're supposed to be in our room. Have to break my arm? I ought to break your neck of all the stupid things to do. Well, what did I do? That's so terrible. You know what happened? The old man ever caught you prowling around his library? Well, I don't know what he's so worried about. I got him an Einstein to understand those books and papers of his. Stairs, I got duck bombs. I'll put some more wood on the fire. Does it make obviously he's back and we're locked in again? What did you expect? You know, there ought to be a law requiring everybody to spend one day out of the year reading old newspapers. And you see what we were in such a sweat about a few years ago, it makes you laugh. Child's play compared to today's problem. Huh? Eh? It's a fine thing. Here I am, spouting profundities. You're flirting with the Sandman.
actually, I was dubious when Professor Scrabbs and Chadwick came to me with this joke. At first, I thought they were playing a joke on their colleagues. When I realized that they were serious and that Professor Marquis' arm had actually... Uh, uh, no, no, Latimer. That was not quite to your testimony. Try again. When I realized that they were serious, I summoned Professor Marquisan. It was then he told me his theory about... Wait. You qualified the word theory. It was then he told me his preposterous theory about... Go on. Uh, about Go on. Oh. Marquisan, in the name of all that's holy, let us rest. What has been done can't be undone. Let us rest. When I have finished with you, my friend, you will have all eternity in which to rest. In the meantime, we will review your testimony over and over and over again. Must be letter perfect when our esteemed dean, Angus Holden, comes to rehear the case. Continue, Latimer. Continue! Guess. Mother, he had guests last night. How do you know that? I saw them downstairs in the library. How did you get downstairs? You were in town yesterday. I rigged up a wire so I could pull that bolt from the inside. Why didn't you tell me? Since you were so darn sure I wouldn't do anything about us being locked in here. All right. I'm sorry I sandpapered your precious ego. Now, tell me what happened. Well, you were asleep. I heard voices downstairs. So I went to investigate. Please, come on, tell me. Molly, I saw them. My uncle and three men. Three terrible looking men. They were like creatures out of a nightmare. I couldn't see their faces too clearly, but they were. They were horrible. Darling, are you sure you weren't having a, a, a nightmare, really? Molly, I know what I saw. But what I can't understand is how they got here. I didn't hear any cars. Unless they, unless they came by where the footpath behind the arboretum. Do you know what's in back of that arboretum? 
a swamp. And in the back of the swamp is a graveyard. Keeping something from me. Why should I keep anything from you? Because you're just silly enough to try to want to protect me. <sighs> protect you? My big worry is protecting me from you. Then why don't you tell me the rest? Huh? Honey, because there's nothing else to tell. Maybe there wasn't anything from the beginning. Maybe you're right. Maybe it just was a bad dream. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that it was just a sick nightmare. Because if it wasn't, I'm losing my mind. I can't understand what's happened to this place. There's something diseased about it. Fred. I, I didn't want to tell you yesterday, because I, I didn't want to get your hopes up. But they told me at the student's employment office that there might be a file clerk's job open next week in Professor Holden's office. Holden? Angus Holden? Yes. He's dean of the science faculty. Do you know him? Oh, no. I just heard the name somewhere.
prepare Sir Latimer. Mm. I trust you're feeling rested and a little more alert than last night. Up, my friend, it's getting late. We still have to arouse Grant and Cherry. Up, my son. Up! <laughs> Professor Holden, and bring him back here. Oh, you tell me now. What's happened? What did you see downstairs? I saw those same three men. And my uncle. Well, is that any reason to go rushing after a man you don't even know? Something horrible going on. Something unholy. I don't even know if I should believe what I saw. Professor Holden, though, he knows my uncle. He knows his work. That's why I gotta bring him back here. Now, Molly, I want you to lock that door from the inside. Don't let anyone in until I get back, do you understand? How long will you be gone? Well, it's almost midnight now. I'll be back by one o'clock. Now, you stay in this room. Young man, you're making absolutely no sense. I'm sorry, Professor Holden. I guess I'm... I'm not exactly rational after what I just saw. Then I suggest we continue when you've got hold of yourself. No, I've got to know now, and you can help me. You were my uncle's superior. You set a judgment on him. There was some sort of an informal trial, wasn't there? Professors Charing, Grant, and Latimer testified against my uncle? I don't know where you got your information, but it was decided that Professor Markerson would resign for reasons of health. That's all I can tell you. Professor, please. I've got to know, and you can help me. I've seen and heard things that make me doubt my sanity. Please! Well, Professor Markson claimed that he had devised certain chemical techniques with which he could raise the dead. The key to his discovery, according to him, was a fluid which he extracted from the mold found in, uh, in graves. To prove his theory, he invited three of his colleagues to his laboratory for a secret demonstration. Naturally, they told me. Professors Latimer, Charing, and Grant. You know what's become of them? All dead, along with Markerson. Along with Markerson? You mean you think Conrad Markerson's dead? But didn't you know? My uncle's alive. I saw him less than an hour ago. But that's impossible. Conrad Markerson is buried in the family crypt. I attended his funeral. You can confirm what I'm saying very simply. Go to the crypt and see for yourself. I intend to, Professor. I intend to. <laughs> Thank you. 
Moi. soon be together. Have no fear. Where is she? What a pity you broke your word to me. Now you must both remain in this house and join us elect but cadaverous little company. Imagine being quite dead and yet returning from the grave again and again as I will it. Where is she? You should be proud of your Uncle Conrad. He has conquered death. Do you hear? I have conquered death. I and I alone understand the secret of life itself. You're mad. Not only have I the power to restore the dead, but I can prolong my own existence forever. Raving mad. Then if that is so, eternity must be madness, for I am eternity. Everlasting without end. <laughs> 